In this video, we will be discussing creating solid primitives, the basics. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0401 create solid primitives, the basics.dwg, located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. 3D solid modeling is used across multiple design disciplines. Using solid model primitives is a key to creating your designs. You can use solid model primitives individually or in conjunction with other solid models to create complex designs. 3D solid models help improve visualization, which improve communication and development of the design. Additionally, 3D solid modeling helps to reduce errors and decreases the time required to complete a project. The majority of the solid primitives creation tools are located in the Home tab modeling panel in the Primitives dropdown. So let's go ahead and just start going through the motions of creating some solid primitives. Let's first start with the box command. We'll click on the box command, and if this is the first time you've ever run these commands, always look to the command line window to see what options are available. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just pick a point in space to start our box. Now, if you look at the command line window, you have a few options available. You can define a cube or define the length. Let's go ahead and select the cube option and see what that does. Notice how it automatically defines a cube with equal sides to all. So I can use dynamic input to simply move the cube in the direction I want to go in, and then simply type in the value that I want. That value is applied to all sides. I'll repeat the command. I'll use some O tracking to get the extension here, and we'll go ahead and click. And now, if you just do it this way, you'll notice you are doing a simple rectangle. If you need to define a length and a width, you can use the length option, or you can simply use dynamic input. So I can type in 100, 75, and then enter, and that's the width, and then you are automatically entered into the height option. So I'll do a height of 50. Let's repeat that command, and I'll acquire that point, and we'll go to the extension over here. And now, if you notice, there's also an additional option to define it by the center. So I'll pick center as an option, and then we'll go ahead and acquire this point, pick. Now you're defining it by the center. You can still do the length as you did before. However, let's go ahead and do that. I'll do 100, 75, and enter. As you enter that, you'll notice it adjusts the height by the center of the cube, equal distance between the center of the cube. So we'll type in 25, enter, and there's our distance. And that's the box command. Next, let's do a sphere. I'll go ahead and change my layer to A-sphere, and we'll go ahead and go to the drop down here, and we'll pick sphere. The sphere is a pretty simple tool. You will notice, however, that there are some additional options. You can do a three-point sphere, a two-point sphere, or a tangent tangent radius sphere, which is very similar to the circle command. I'll just pick a point in space. You are prompted for a radius or a diameter if you choose to select the diameter option, and I'll simply define one by 50 units. And there's our sphere. Let's go ahead and create a cylinder. I'll change my layer to A dash cylinder, and we'll pick the cylinder dropdown. With the cylinder command, you have very similar options like the sphere command, three point, two point, tangent tangent radius. You can also draw an elliptical cylinder. I'll click on the drawing. I'll define my base radius of 25. Enter, and now you're defining a height. Notice how you can also change to the axis endpoint or a two point distance. We'll type in 50, and there's our cylinder. I'll repeat that command, and this time we'll go ahead and select the elliptical option. So when you're doing the elliptical option, you of course define the base axes for the ellipse. So let's say I want to have it off of the extension of this center. I'll pick there, and then my other point, I'll pick there, and then now I can pick the other axis as well. And there's your elliptical cylinder. Let's go ahead and create a cone. And we'll go ahead and start the cone command. With the cone command, you have a couple of options. We'll first draw one that has a cone that does not lead to a point. Notice the options available, three point, two point, tangent, tangent, radius, as well as elliptical. I'll just click out here in space and I'll define a radius of 50. And then now notice how I can go straight up to a point if I wanted to, but in this case, I'm gonna actually select the top radius option. I'll pick top radius. Now notice how I can define a top radius as well. We'll go ahead and define one as 25 and then enter. And now it puts you into the height option, which I'll enter for 100. So notice how you can create a cone that either has a point or does not have a point. Let's go ahead and change our layer to the wedge layer. And we'll go to the wedge command, which is right here. And we'll go over here to this location and we'll go ahead and click in space. It's very similar to the rectangle command. And we're going to define a base distance here. Before I do so, I can actually just select the length option if I want to. And then for the length option, we'll define a distance of 100. I'm going to lock my polar tracking, press enter. And then for the width option, I want a distance of 75 and then enter. And now you're defining the height for the wedge. 
So we'll do a height of 50 and then enter. We'll go ahead and repeat that command. And before we do anything, let's go ahead and select the center option. So very similar to the box command, you can use a very similar process. And we'll go ahead and define a center for the wedge. And again, we'll pick the length option right there. We'll lock in a distance this way of 100. And then a distance in of this way of 75. Then enter. And notice how it does the height of the wedge from the center of the wedge. So again, you have these nice little options available depending on the points that you have in your 3D models. And we'll type a distance in of 100. Let's go ahead and look at the torus command. We'll change our layer to A-torus. Pick the drop down. We'll select torus. Again, very similar options. As you can see here, we have three point, two point, and tangent tangent radius. So I'll go ahead and just click in space here. Notice how you're defining a radius first. So in this case, we want a radius of 50. And then now you're defining the tube radius. The polar tracking allows you to define that distance here. And we'll define a tube radius of 10. And there's our torus. Let's go ahead and do a pyramid. So we'll go ahead and change our layer to A dash pyramid. We'll pick the pyramid tool. And notice the options available. You can specify the center point of the base or the edge or the sides. This is very similar to the polygon command, except it allows you to do this in 3D. So in this case, we'll first define it by the sides. I'll type S and then enter. So the number of sides I want is six and then enter. Now I'll pick the center point of my radius. Notice how I have a hexagon and it's also being defined by the edges there. So we'll go ahead and lock dynamic input here and we'll type a radius of 50 and then enter. And now for the height, I can type a height of 100 and then enter. Notice how we have a six-sided pyramid. We'll go ahead and run the command again. And for this instance, we'll do it by the edge, press enter. And so the first point of the edge, we'll pick here. And notice how it goes right to the edge. So I can actually go in here and define it like so. And we'll type a distance in of 50, then enter. Now for the height, before I actually begin the height, let's say I did not want a point. I want a very similar option as you see here with the cone. So we'll type in T and then enter for top radius. And we'll do 25, enter with a height of 100. So you can also, very similar to the cone command, you can also define a pyramid that does not have a point as well. As you can see, it's pretty simple to draft the primitive solid models. Later on in future videos, we will talk about using some of these to create complex models. This concludes this video on creating solid primitives, the basics.